I'll be going over profit loss. What this will do is it will create a condensed profit and loss statement with so many transactions, fees and charges that Amazon charges you. It's hard to keep up to date and categorize it into the proper um, transaction. And so what we did is we took that into account and created this function so that if you use this, it's going to give you a consolidated financial statement view. Check the video on finances if you haven't, because that is the more detailed transactional view. If what you're trying to look up is say something like this, where you actually want the, every single detailed line item of what you're being charged related to say refunds or shipments or guarantees, chargebacks, etc., check out the finances function, which is over on the left side here, finances. Always refer to the documentation that we have. This is going to help you out because there's example formulas, there's the syntax descriptions and the information. Here's an example where I've created a formula profit loss over the last 30 days for the US company, US marketplace, sorry. The way it's going to be displayed is exactly what you see. It auto generates this table. All the transactions that you see in finances is from here to down here. Look how many transactions and different items there are and on just this one account. So all the way down to say up row 100 and something. Instead of doing that manually and trying to consolidate it and um, reconcile it, we've done it for you. It ca captures all the transactional data and puts it into the proper category and this is what we'll do. Let me delete this so that you can see it actually in how it works. Gorilla underscore profit loss. You can use any single period and make it as dynamic as you want. If you want custom period between two dates, you can use custom, which is right here. But in this example, I'm just going to select this month as I already created a drop down for this. This month, comma, period is required. And that is the only required input. So if I just wanted to do this month, that's all I needed. That's the easiest way to pull up the pretty much the profit and loss statement for this month. And you'll see that there's sales, the discounts, um, the reimbursements, etc., all the way down to uh, the fees, the inv removal inventories. There's a few line items that we took out of Amazon Cogs because over the vast amount of feedback and um, information that we've gathered from other users and sellers, we've taken out and categorized specifically, say, fulfillment fees, inventory removal, storage, as well as... Um, the commissions and every other or mostly all the other Amazon fees are going to be categorized under other Amazon fees. So things like, let's see, let's give an example, things like all of these um, disposal fees, monthly subscription fees, review enrol re enrollment fees, things that may not be that big, those are all combined under other Amazon fees. But the great thing is we also created it so that you can expand and see exactly all the different items that are under each category. And I'll get to that in the next section. Let's expand on this formula a little bit. So I've got period. I'm going to lock that reference in by clicking F4. Next, I'm going to select marketplace. Oh, and if you're in Europe or South America, instead of comma, you're going to be using semicolon. But for me, I use comma. Marketplace. I'm just going to select my default marketplace. If you do not set a marketplace and you just leave it empty, it's going to default to quote unquote all. And if you're in the US, that's going to combine US, Canada, Mexico, Brazil. If you're in Europe, it's going to combine all of your European marketplaces. So to get it for each marketplace, make sure that you enter the marketplace. Otherwise, you're going to get either um, too high of a number and it's going to throw things off for you. The SKU, I don't really care about trying to break things down on a per SKU basis. I could, like for example, um, of the list here, I'm not sure if there's anything here, but let's say I did that. It's going to break it down, but on a per SKU level, okay, so this SKU doesn't have any sales. On a per SKU level, there are some items that are not included. For example, there's no storage fees associated with a SKU. 
even if you look at your transactional reports, Amazon is, doesn't break this out by SKU. It just gives you a one payment summary of 799.68. They don't say, okay, SKU A uh, was <coughs> should have been charged $100. SKU B uh, is $200, etc. It's just a, a total account basis. I'm going to leave out SKU, which means I'm just going to leave a blank, and that means that it's just going to bring out, um, it's just going to apply it across the entire account. For category, this is where, let's see, um, this is where if I want to bring it, break it down into the details, this is what category and details will be used for. The different categories are these um, category names right here. Rather than showing it here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can actually now break each one down and get a good view. Okay, so see how I do it. I'm going to create a drop down list like I did with all of these this month and marketplace, etc. of these categories. I'm going to select the cell that I want to load up that drop down list. I'm going to do data, data validation, and a list from a range. I'm going to click this and I'm, the, the range I'm going to select is here. And in the event that we add more categories, you can just future-proof it and select more rows if you want, even though it's empty. If it's empty, it's not going to show anything. So even though it's empty, later on, if more categories are added, then you don't have to update this range. So I'm going to save that. Then you see the little arrow that comes up. I'm just going to apply some color formatting because I like to add a yellow um, color to show an input or to show a selection. Okay, and let's do sales. Now, let's get into the gritty again, nitty gritty again. So, profit loss, period, let's do, okay, this month, I'm gonna do this so that I can show you how to make it dynamic. Okay, B1, comma, marketplace, US, comma, SKU, I'm gonna leave empty because I want it across the total account comma category now this is the category so I'm going to select the drop down that I just created comma and then for the details I'm going to do yes because I want to see every single category listed under sales like what has been rolled up under sales that's what I want to know so the formula now is G2 and then I end I enter yes in the details I don't care about start date and end date right now because I'm using I'm not using a custom date I'm using this month Close the formula, let's see it in action, and there you have it. I'm going to change the font sizes a bit so it's easy for you to see. Okay, and let's minimize this a bit. Expand on this so that you can see the full thing. Okay, and there you have it. So under this sales category, you can see that there's three items rolled up from the Amazon transaction reports. These three items where this is FBA, this is FBM, and then this is subscribe and save or the, um, I forgot what the name I, uh, off the top of my head, but it's the light and the light program. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Now let's, if I want to change the category, I can just change it to say, hey, what? I wonder what's, rolled up under tax click on that and then this formula will now dynamically pull up every transaction item rolled up into the tax and by doing so you can get a good consolidated view and then have something next to it or in some other place where you actually have the expanded view uh, and you can see like all the different things under tax uh, this is 27 items and anytime Amazon adds a new item, we go back in and then we categorize it under one of these categories. So that's how you can see how it works. So Amazon Cogs, let's see what it is. Right now on this account, it's only one thing. It's the shipment fee. What else? Fulfillment fees. Okay, Amazon fulfillment fees. What is under that? So there's all of these. Um, Okay, so if if this account was paying weight based fees, it would be added, and you'll see that this sum for Amazon FBA fulfillment fees matches up with that. 
I forgot to mention earlier on that whatever you see here is based on the local currency. Right now, it's set to US. If you change this to Germany, it's gonna sh it's listed in euros. If you um, do it in Sweden, then it's gonna be listed as krona. If you do it in Turkey, it's gonna be listed as lira, etc. Uh, so whatever the currency is, it's the local currency. And I, was, I said I was going to show you how to how this is made dynamic because as you can see there's no manually hard coded uh, formulas other than the final yes, the date, the um, the marketplace, the category identity, the category name. So if I change the period from this month to say this year, you'll see how now everything gets updated. Boom, there you go. And even on everything, on the detailed side as well, you can see it, how it all comes into play. Other fees will be a good one because there's so much in other fees. Now, if you were to try and, let's see, let's all the way down. There's 70 items here. If you were to try and reconcile this on a even a monthly basis, that's just banging on your, your head on the table type of work. So rather than all that tediousness, you, you can see how easy it is. If I want to do a custom period. Let's say I want to build out a, a monthly or a yearly profit and loss, right? So what I'll do is I could easily just do something like uh, 2020, 12, and then get the information here. Boom. 2020, 11, and then get this information like this. And you can easily build a month-to-month -month, um, financial statement, profit and loss, by doing this. A question that you've probably been, you probably had until now is, so what is my gross, what is my net? Okay, one thing I want to do, point out again, is that we do not support any advertising data. I'm going to delete this to clean things up a bit. We don't support any Amazon advertising data in terms of like coming directly from your PPC reports. What you see here is Amazon advertising. This will only show up if you use your Seller Central account to pay for advertising costs rather than a credit card. So if you're using the fin the money from your account, this will show up. Otherwise, there's nothing. We don't support any PPC related costs. We're not gonna. We can't get into and pull anything related to the advertising API. The advertising team just does not allow it. And for the foreseeable future, they have said no. Um, so that's just something to keep aware of. So what you can do if um, this is this will be the manual part where you would be. You can enter something like manual ad spend. And then if this was like, say, 20,000, you can enter it manually. You just have to define and make sure that it's a manual box so that you know and you don't skip over it or you forget about it. And again, that's why I use these color formatting where blue text um, and a orangish or yellow box denotes a manual input. <clears throat> and then the gross would be, you could do a gross profit formula, operating profit formula. And again, I use operating profit instead of net like most people because there could be some other things after taxes and things that um, are specific to your business that get taken out of operating profit. But for the most part, most people are going to have operating profit equals very close to net profit. So gross profit is going to be, let's say your sales plus, it's minus the discounts, but since it's already negative, I'm using a plus sign. Okay plus this, plus the shipping income, plus other this. Um, so you can do something like, I should actually do like total income related stuff here. Move this down a bit. <laughs> okay, and I could even simplify like total expense. And then this will be, let's say this, plus this, plus this cost of goods plus this let's see other Amazon fees no we should because that's part of operating expenses so up to the cost of goods I've gotten this and then I can create a gross profit of this the difference between this two so this is a gross profit and then to get the operating profit then I could do operating expenses 
on the Amazon side. And this is going to be, I entered at COGS before, so this, plus the commissions that we have to give Amazon, plus the FBA fulfillment fees, plus the inventory removals, plus the ad spend, there you go. And so the difference between this is going to be that, and there you have it. So by us creating and giving you all of these categorized inputs, then it's very easy for you to actually come up with your own formulas to create your profit and loss how you want it. You know, you probably may not agree with how I categorize or how I um, put, put it into the sequence, but um, it's specific to your business. So you control it. It's highly flexible. And you can see that now I can have a operating profit. If I change this to this quarter, well, it should be the same because it's still early in the year. But let's say I did last quarter. <laughs> the only thing I would have to update is this manual ad spend to reflect the last quarter value. And the operating profit will um, show all of that information as well. So that is how to use profit and loss. I hope you understand. And it's a very powerful one. You can use custom dates as you want. And refer to the documentation, refer to this video. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know.